Hello there beautiful people, welcome back to my channel and thank you for clicking on another video. As you can tell by the title of this video, I'm going to be talking to you about how to build a life that you love. This is such a huge topic, such an important topic and something I've been doing in my own life for a while now and I feel like I've learned a certain number of things and my life by God's grace has been changing and improving and shaping into more of what I want. And I'm gonna tell you exactly how I am still doing that. So if you wanna find out, then simply keep watching. Step one is to decide what you want. This is huge. This is a huge step, which a wildly high number of people do not do and don't even know how to do. You have to decide what you want. There's no one size fits all when it comes to a happy life. One person might wanna be working some crazy high pressure Wall Street job and that's their idea of an amazing, fulfilled life. Another person might want to be on a farm with hundreds of cows, and that's their idea of a happy and fulfilled life. People are different. You have to decide for yourself what it is that you want. So what you need to do is sit down with yourself. It doesn't really take that long. In fact, there's a really good method, which I will do another video on, because I think that needs to be a video in itself about how to do this, but I'm just gonna give you some basics to start with. Um, so just sit down by yourself and ask yourself if you are happy and satisfied and fulfilled and content in life where you are right now. Now, this doesn't mean have you achieved your goal of winning 10 Grammys. No, you don't have to have achieved your goal in order to be happy, content, Content and satisfied in life right now. You can still be along the journey, but actually you should be happy, content and satisfied along your journey in life. Um, and that will come from knowing that you're heading in the right direction, knowing that at the moment things are where they should be, or at least on their way to being where they should be. Just remember the answer can be yes. We don't always have to be striving for change in different areas, okay? Like it's totally okay to be like, actually I'm good right now. Maybe I'll save this video for another time. Um, but if the answer is no, which I'm guessing it is, seeing as you clicked on this video, uh, then you're going to need to make a change. You need to decide what will it look like for me to be able to answer yes. Now you might be thinking, okay, but I don't know what I want. And that's okay. You don't have to be sure, but you can take a best guess. You don't have to be 100% sure. You can be 51% sure because guess what? It's not set in stone. You can totally change your mind. You can try something for like a year and you're like, oh, actually this doesn't make me happy and you can switch. And you might be thinking, oh my gosh, a year, a year of trying something that I'm not sure about, that sounds bad. It's much better than staying in the current situation that you're sure isn't working. So the only way to figure out what you want is to try things, see how they fit and try them on. I heard this saying recently, it was on a TikTok, but still a great saying of how like, um, she was talking about your twenties, but I truly believe that you can do this all through life and um, you can try on different lives until you find the one that fits you. So you can see it like you're trying on an outfit of being a corporate baddie or being a stay at home mum or being starting your own business or whatever it is, you just need to decide what you want. Now, the way that I like to um, make this a little bit easier to digest and to think of um, is that I like to divide my life into different areas. These involve my work, so what I do or how I receive money in this life, my hobbies, what I do for fun that's not associated with money, uh, my social life, so my relationships, whether romantic or platonic, my environment, so physically where I am, what's around me, what I see, and my spiritual life. So I will look at each of these areas individually and I will see, am I happy in my work life? If no, what will make me happier? Am I happy with my hobbies? If no, what will make me happier? And these are all interlinked as well. Often when we're not happy in our work life, that can, um, or when we're overworked in our work life, that can lead to us not having any time for our relationships and our hobbies. So these are all linked in, but it can help to just separate them and look at them individually to get an overall view of what you want your life to look like, because only you can answer that question. And if you don't have a goal, how are you gonna get there? So you have to at least know what that means to you like you you clicked on this video because you want to create your dream life it's your dream life you need to define that for yourself doesn't have to be perfect you, I know you're not a fortune teller don't worry you can say oh I'm not sure but I'd like to try this and see if this makes me happy I'd like to try having more friends or going out twice a week I'd like to try starting dancing again as a hobby and see if that would look more like my dream life cool, give it a go. This, it's no big deal. Like we're all winging it in life. So feel free to wing it. So step one, 
to building your dream life is deciding what that actually is for you because it's different for everyone. Yours will differ from mine. Mine will differ from yours. Mine might involve a lot more animals in it than you would assume. So watch this space. <laughs> Step number two is to take responsibility for your life. Now, this one can be a bit of a touchy subject because we, myself included, we have a tendency to want to put responsibility on other people's situations and things. We want to comfort ourselves with the thought that something is beyond our control and it is someone else's fault. Um, and so we avoid taking responsibility for ourselves. But I want to encourage you to see responsibility as something to enjoy and be grateful for rather than to avoid uh, because responsibility is essentially power. I did look up the definition of responsibility and it can be defined as, I'm just going to read this so I don't get it wrong, responsibility can be defined as the state or fact of having a duty with something or having control over someone. Control. So control is power, right? If you had control over the lottery numbers, you'd be able to give yourself the lottery win, right? So taking responsibility for your life, taking control means that you then can be in charge of the steering wheel. You can be the one to turn left or right. And so it's not only taking that um, responsibility over your future, but over your present, over your present, over your past as well, but some people aren't ready for that step yet, but definitely over your present. So if there is a relationship in your life that you're not happy with, take responsibility over the fact that you have allowed or you are allowing that in your life. Now I know I don't wanna step on any toes or offend anyone, but I say this with encouragement because as soon as you just change the way you're looking at things and you start to see it as, oh wait, I do play a role in this. I am texting that person back, or I am responding to them when they're being cruel and toxic. I am staying in this situation. And I do have the power to leave the situation. If you're in a job that you hate, you have the power to leave that job, to quit that job, to cut your hair, to sell your house, to move to another country. You have the power to do these things. The route to getting that result might be a little hard. It might take effort, but it is in your hands. So I really encourage you to take responsibility, take the steering wheel of your own life, because we are the ones who choose our consequences, okay? I, I like seeing it as like, we choose the consequences in life. So for example, say if you've got a job that you hate and you want to quit, you get to choose whether or not to quit. And with each choice will come certain consequences, both good and bad. Choice of not quitting, if you choose to not quit this horrible job, you will stay in this horrible job and continue to hate the majority of your awake hours for the foreseeable future. The, the pros of staying in the job, you continue having uh, that salary until they fire you or until the company fails or until they let you go or until you can no longer do that job. Because just know that's also not guaranteed. Like as we saw in the pandemic, as we've seen time and time again, with recessions, people lose their jobs. So you can choose to stay in that job and get those consequences or you can choose to quit and get other consequences. So consequences of quitting, the positive consequences might be that you are now open with more time to look for a new job that you do love. You now have more time to sleep and to rest. You are no longer in a toxic situation, so you feel a lot more at peace and happy with your wake hours, those precious life hours that you will never get back. You can also um, see some negative potential consequences with quitting your job. Uh, for example, um, a feeling of uncertainty over where your income will come from, um, potentially lower income for the next few months, or potentially higher income when you find a better job. So life is about choosing your consequences, but never say, I can't, or I'm stuck in the job. No, no, you have a choice. What you've just done is convinced yourself that this is the only choice, but there is always always, there are always other options, you always have a choice. Take responsibility for your life. It's scary, but I personally would much rather have the power and control that God has given me. God has given us that responsibility to steer where we want to go in life. Like the Bible says, choose ye this day whom you will serve, like make a choice. It is up to you to make a choice for your own life. So yeah, I personally would much rather have the power and control of taking responsibility than the comfort of blaming someone else. It's your life, that's you, that's your responsibility, it's no one else's, okay? So take responsibility because with that responsibility comes power, 
to steer the wheel to where you wanna go. It's a road trip, baby. Number three is to stop predicting the future. Oh my gosh, this is one of my biggest pet peeves. When someone says something they wanna do, and then they predict the future and they tend to do it negatively. They say, oh, but if I do that, then this will happen and this will happen and this will go wrong and that will go wrong. And I'm like, how do you know? Like, how do you know? Are you a fortune teller? Are you an all seeing, all knowing? Like, do you, do you know the lottery numbers? Because if you do, let, let a gal know, hook a gal up. So why do we predict our future with negative consequences as though it's a fact when it's not like, it's kind of, it's actually kind of audacious. It is very audacious of us to say, oh, well, if I go for my dream job of being a dancer, I'm gonna fail. Like, how do you know you're gonna fail? Who, who are you to define whether or not you're gonna fail? Who are you to say whether or not your audience will love your book, whether it will be a flop or a success? You don't get to decide, let the market decide. Your job is to actually put it out there. So stop negatively predicting your future. That is not your job. Your job is to act in your present. It's such a weird and negative habit that we have to predict negative events in our future. I think we do it as like a protective mechanism. Like, oh, if I say that I'm gonna fail at that, then I'll never try and so I won't experience that failure but you didn't know that you were gonna fail. So you've potentially just stopped yourself from succeeding. The only thing in fact that you can know for sure is what is happening in your present. So using the job example again, you know that you hate your current job. You don't know that you won't find a better job that you love or a career that you love, but you've predicted as though you did. And so all you've done is guaranteed that you stay in the horrible current situation that you do know for sure. So please stop, stop the negative predictions over your future, it's really not your business. It's not your job to predict the future. Please stop doing that. You're just gonna discourage yourself and you also can't, you're probably wrong. Like it is super audacious, you are literally probably wrong. If you think you are right, please just go and guess the lottery numbers. If not, you have no right telling yourself that you will fail at the project that you're about to try, okay? Thank you very much, thank you. Be nicer to yourself, okay guys? And my fourth and final tip in how to create your dream life is to take action. Just do it. Put one foot in front of the other. Like if I say to you right now, continue to listen, you can continue to listen to this video. So you have the ability to do, to make things happen to take action and you need to. The Bible says faith without works is dead. So you can sit here saying, oh yeah, this is my dream life and um, I'm taking responsibility. I know that the situations I'm in right now are my responsibility and under my power and control to change. Um, and I am speaking positively about my future. I'm not uh, predicting a bad future. Then if you just sit there and do nothing, nothing will happen. You have to actually take action. So if you're, uh, Dream life includes quitting your job, do it. If you need to leave a toxic relationship, do it. If you need to write a book, write. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can write for 10 minutes and put the pen or keyboard laptop down. You can do things in a less than perfect way. You just have to do them. Because I think sometimes we wrap our heads around doing things perfectly so much that we end up doing nothing at all. And it was like, okay, well, you'd have been better off if you'd written a rubbish book than if you were just sat in this 20 year long daydream about how you might one day write a book. Just write, just actually take action and do it. Like, <laughs> you, your action doesn't have to be perfect, but it does have to be. It has to be, it has to exist. So take action. And that is all I wanna say. I know this is super simplistic and brief in creating your dream life. And I recognize that things take time, but I just want to encourage you to meditate on and consider those four kind of, I guess they're more mindset shifts and perspectives to enable you to believe that your dream life is possible um, and, and to start taking the steps. This isn't like, oh, one, two, three, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, three weeks from now, you're living your dream life. No, but it's simply, adjusting the 
or turning the steering wheel of your life so that you're heading in that direction. And it will take more adjustments. It's not just that you steer once and that's it. No, you're gonna have to imagine your dream life, reimagine, maybe things will change and your dream life changes a little bit and you have to alter what the vision looks like. Um, you have to take responsibility, take control time and time again. You have to speak positively and reject negative future predictions time and time again. You have to take action, then take a little bit more action, then take a little bit more action. But with time, your dream life will start to materialize. These are things that I have done for my Myself. So I literally sat down and I was like, okay, <laughs> like not even intentionally. Uh, there was a time post pandemic when I was truly unhappy and I had a bit of a meltdown. This isn't in my video notes, by the way, I'm just going off topic here, but it's very much on topic. I had a literal meltdown where I was like, I'm not happy. My life is nowhere near where I wanted it to be. I'm not doing what I want. I feel desperately unhappy. Um, and I sat down with my sister and brother-in-law and we talked through things and they prayed with me. And so what I did was, I decided what I did want. At that time, I'd just gotten into acting school and I loved it. It was giving me so much joy to act, to learn to act, and I was really enjoying it. So I was like, I wanna do more of this, but I don't really have the time to be doing it. So I kind of defined exactly what I would want. I visualized, prayed, and asked God for where I would wanna live, so the kind of flat that I'm living in now. Um, so I, I had this picture of what I wanted my life to look like, pretty imminently actually that was what I wanted my life to look like over the next couple of years so I made a picture of it first of all I then took responsibility for the things in my life that weren't the way I wanted uh, so an example of that was that I was working insane hours truly insane I was not sleeping enough I was crying most days after work I was working full-time in a &E in a hospital that was truly one of the worst environments I've experienced um and that was a huge cause of my being unhappy. Um, so I took responsibility for that, that even though I felt it was what I had to do, it really wasn't what I had to do. And I genuinely had created this belief that I had to be in this job. And I remember my brother-in-law saying like, do you though? And I was like, yeah, I, I don't. I don't have to do this. I can, I can do something else. Um, and so yeah, I took responsibility for that. I took responsibility for finding a new place to live. Uh, and that was hard, that was hard because it was post pandemic, the London housing market was insane, but I took responsibility for that. And I stopped predicting negative outcomes. So instead of focusing on how terrible things would be if I did leave my job, I'd had so many people tell me that in London it was so much harder uh, finding locum work as a doctor. I stopped those predictions, I just put them out of my mind. I was just like, I'm, this, is go this is going to work out, it's all gonna be good, I'm gonna take action. And I, st I put all those negative predictions out of my mind, okay? I did not let them um, even come into my mind. Luckily at that time, I hadn't heard any negative predictions with acting. I was just like, I'm gonna be an actor and this is gonna be really amazing and fun. <laughs> and I didn't have any negative beliefs about what it took or, or what it would be like. And finally, I took action. I quit my job. I went full force into acting, doing classes. I did so many viewings for flats to the point where it actually got to the point where I was, I, I don't want to use the word homeless lightly, but all my stuff was in a van and I had to live in a hotel because it was that hard finding a place that I love. But fast forward a couple of years, I'm acting. I've just booked a role in a musical. Um, I live in a flat that I'm so grateful for, I'm blessed to do. I work with um, in a hospital that I love, in a specialty that I love. I sleep enough at night, I don't come home and cry. Like, I change certain things in my life and by God's grace, I say by God's grace because our, our whole life is by God's grace and also because I prayed about this a lot. By God's grace, I now live a very different reality. Like I literally went from being in a place where I was like, this is not what I wanna do or where I wanna be, to being in a place where I'm like, this is, I, I am happy and content and fulfilled where I am. Don't get me wrong, things aren't perfect. And there's been a lot of things that have happened that I would have rather didn't happen. There are a lot of things that I'm still working on and working towards. But by God's grace, I'm grateful that I'm, I'm headed in a direction in terms of I'm learning the things I need to be learning and I'm continuing to take action. I'm continuing to tweak that steering wheel and I don't get it perfect every time, but my life 
has definitely like genuinely I cannot express to you how sad I was I was like I think I was 27 or 28 I think I just turned 28 and I was like I'm so unhappy in my life and where I am and now I'm 29 I'm like things are so much better like are they perfect no not quite but you know in fact I don't even know what perfect means. What does that even mean? So yeah, I'm not gonna ramble on for too much longer. I really hope that this video has helped you in some way. Um, let me know in the comments if it has. Um, if so, which bit stood out to you? I share this video with a friend. Please subscribe for more videos because I'm gonna be doing so many more videos on life improvement, self-improvement, growing, um, forming a life that you love because it's something which I have been genuinely studying and doing so much over the last, I'm gonna say specifically five years, but probably eight years, but very intensely over the last five years. So yeah, I love you guys so much. Thank you for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye. <laughs>